What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything you need to know about and what's happening here in our country on a daily basis. In this video, the new inflation readings are coming out here, and I'll show you what's happening here in our country. This will lead to what the Federal Reserve is going to do with raising interest rates here. And I'll give you the details on this because it's going to be very important here for what's going to happen with your wallet here going forward. Also, Kevin McCarthy, the leader of the House of Representatives, says he backs the Republican George Santos, who lied about his resume and his entire past and says that he shouldn't be fired because he was elected, even though he lied about everything, pretty much. And I'll give the details on that here as well. Even though the county he was elected in, the, the, Republican, <laughs> the Republicans from his own county says that he should be fired. I'll give the details on that here and more uh, in this video. So we got a lot to talk about here. Let's jump right in. If you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new videos. And thanks for liking and sharing these videos. All right, here we go. Okay, inflation down by the tiniest of amounts in December, month over month, by 0.1% in line from expectations from economists. But it's better than going up right? Better than inflation going up here. The consumer price index fell 0.1% in December, meeting expectations for the biggest drop that we've had since April of 2020. This is basically because we haven't had any drops in inflation since 2020 like this. So this is a good thing, showing that inflation is actually coming down. Yeah, now excluding, I'll zoom this in here for you, excluding food and energy. So excluding food and energy, core CPI rose 0.3%. So it just kind of shows you here um, the details here, also in line with estimates. On an annual basis here, uh, CPI, which is basically inflation here, is at around 6.5% now while core is at 5.7%. So remember here that the last inflation rating was at 7.1. So now we're down to 6.5% on the overall inflation and core at 5.7%. The biggest reason for easing in inflation comes from a sharp drop in gasoline prices, which are now lower on a year-over-year -year, uh basis based on uh, December's readings, December's readings. Yeah, and uh, these inflation readings in December posted their biggest monthly decline since early in the pandemic, uh, the Labor Department reported. So inflation is now down to 6.5%. It was 7.1% last month, highlighting the persistent burden that rising costs of living has placed on U.S. households. That was the smallest annual increase since October 2021, showing that inflation is coming down a little bit at a time. Here is a kind of a chart of inflation to give you an idea here. Uh, the blue item is all items, the dark blue, and the dotted light blue is less food and energy. Yeah, so. Gives you an idea here of that. A steep drop in gasoline was responsible for the monthly decline. Prices at the pump tumbled 9.4% for the month and are now down 1.5% from a year ago after surging past $5 in mid-June 2022. Fuel oil slid 16.6% .6 for the month, natural gas being down a lot also contributing to a 4.5% decline for the energy index. Food prices actually increased 0.3% in December. That's been a tough one. The, the price of food here not really going down. That's a, that's a big problem here is food prices 
not going down. While Shelter also saw another sharp gain up 0.8% uh, for uh, Shelter and Rent. Um, a lot of this is because of rising interest rates for the month. 7.5% higher than a year ago. Yeah. Used vehicle prices also saw a, an important drive of inflation. We're off 2.5% for the month and are now down 8.8% for the year. Uh, this is because uh, used vehicle prices going down because interest rates going up. Yep. Transportation services are still 14.6% higher than a year ago. Airlines, uh, cost of airfare, 3.1% lower than a month ago, but are still up 28.5% from a year ago. Wow. Stocks up here yet again here on the news. Here's a year-to-date chart. Looks like the Dow Jones Index up over a 1,000 points here year-to-date since the year has started. Off to a bang as um, we may have hit a bottom. We may have hit a bottom and gone past it here. As um, remember that uh, over 50% or about 50% of Americans have money in the stock market through IRAs, pensions, 401ks, retirement funds, or just money in the market uh, in addition to that. So uh, remember last year, the S&P 500, which is a pretty similar index, but basically tracks the top 500 companies in America uh, based on you know their, their sales, their, their revenue had a negative 19.4% return for the year last year. So here's here's a one year chart which is pretty close to, you know, what it did last year here. So you can see what it did here with a chart from one year ago. So year to date here since the start of 2023 starting to gain some of it back, starting to gain some of it back here. I did a a recent article here that showed Typically, on a big down year, again, you know, past results is not a what's what's that disclaimer that past results is not always a prediction of future performance. Uh, but typically, on a bad year like that, you you typically see a bounce back the next year. And now that we're seeing inflation has go gone down for something like something like six or seven months in a row here, albeit slowly, but we have seen it happened multiple months here in a row. Um, it does look like the stock market is trying to bounce back. Now, does it mean it's going to happen? I mean, Putin could drop a nuclear bomb tomorrow, even if it's just not, even if it's on Ukraine and not here in the U.S., that could literally be, you know, the end of the stock market. So it uh, doesn't necessarily mean something's going to happen. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, you know, Russia's slowly being pushed out of Ukraine here. Um, so hopefully we, we see an end to that war here sometime soon, hopefully, hopefully. Um, but honestly, that, that thing could drop the whole year of 2023. And hopefully that doesn't happen here either. But um, it, it does kind of seem like the, we've had a bottom to the stock market and Maybe we're going to go up here. So even if it just goes back to normal of where we were from last year, that would be a gain of well 19.4%. But really, I think if you if you do the math here, just to, to go back up, I think it's actually a gain of a little bit more than 19.4% when you kind of figure it out. So We'll see here. We'll see here. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. A lot of people's, you know, pensions and 401ks and IRAs and, you know, retirement funds uh, really kind of took a little bit of, of a pretty big dip there with that 19.4% drop. So, uh, but if you had a balanced, you know, bond and um, stock percentage, it wasn't that big of a dip. But um, bonds had a bad year too. Everything just kind of went down because of interest rates going up. When interest rates go up, bonds go down as well. So it wasn't a good year for anything uh, unless you're in cash, but cash wasn't doing good either because interest rates were, you know, cash was paying almost zero. Yeah. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. Next up, I'm really surprised by this. Kevin McCarthy, who, you know, barely, barely won the House speakership role after his 15th vote, you know, losing the vote 14 times. 
actually backs George Santos, the kind of shamed Republican who lied about his background, work history, even lied about his his mom's uh, <laughs> uh, I think it was his mom's death. And um, he doesn't call for George Santos to resign, who he was just elected to Congress, and says the voters elected him to serve, but they elected him to serve under false pretenses. Even, even the Nassau County GOP Republican Party, where he was elect, you know, he was he's from Nassau County, has called on and this is from Fox News here, Republican you know, station, has called to for him to step down. The NASA GOP was the first major Republican group to call for Santos's resignation, and George Santos refuses to resign after they have called on him to step down, saying that they can't put their trust in him because he basically lied about almost everything that there was to lie about. So how can they trust him in Congress to do the right thing when he lied about everything there, almost everything there was in his own personal history? How can you trust somebody like that? Well, Kevin McCarthy says the voters elected him to serve and is actually backing this guy. I'm completely shocked on this. And remember here that this is tricky ground for Kevin McCarthy because just one single a uh, person can call on a vote of no confidence on the speaker and start a impeachment proceeding based on these new rules that he had to agree to for ousting the speaker. Uh, yeah, so here's what Kevin McCarthy says. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Republican from California yesterday, declined to call for Republican Representative George Santos from New York to resign over fabrications or lies about his resume and questions about his finances, even as New York Republicans raised the pressure on the embattled first-term lawmaker, saying, quote, I tried to stick by the Constitution. The voters elected him to serve. If there is a concern, and he has to go through the ethics, let him move through that. He will continue to serve. McCarthy's comments mark his most substantive statement to date about Santos, weeks after the congressman admitted to misrepresenting his background. Asked about Santos admitting to fabricating parts of his resume, McCarthy says, so did a lot of people here in the Senate and others. Well, those people should be investigated as well, right? I don't know who he's talking about, but we should we should know about this. That deflection echoed Santos pointing to Biden and other Democrats when asked about the fabrications. Well, we need to know specifics, and we can't just say this we need to know exactly what you're talking about you can't just you know make up things and say oh well you know so and so did something what exactly are we talking about here but santos fabrications about going to college working at major financial institutions and having employees killed in the pulse nightclub shooting misleading claims of jewish heritage and major questions about his sharp increase in reported personal wealth that he used to finance his campaign put him in a class of his own. Quote, it's the voters who made that decision. He has to answer to the voters and the voters to make another decision in two years. <laughs> he is going to have to build the trust here and he's going to have the opportunity to try to do that. Yeah, two years from now. Uh, local New York Republicans, as well as fellow first-term New York Republican Representative Anthony D'Esposito called Santos to resign earlier on Wednesday. It has been typical in the past for members of Congress to step down only after they have been convicted of a crime. 
While both local and federal authorities in the U.S. are reportedly investigating Santos, no charges have been filed against him yet. Brazilian authorities, however, are reportedly reviving a case against Santos relating to a checkbook he allegedly stole in 2008. Santos has denied being charged with check fraud in Brazil. It would take a two-thirds vote of the House representative to expel Santos from his seat. Yeah, so what are your thoughts on this? Um, should they vote to expel him? Should he resign on his own after his own Republicans from his own county? The, the GOP is calling on him to resign. <sighs> yeah. This is a, this, you know, you would think that there should be a background check when they run for Congress. There, should there, should there be some qualifications here? Should there be some type of, we just take your word for it? I mean, what do you think here? Or is it just like, hey, anybody go up there, run for Congress and lie through your teeth to the public. And then after you get elected, we'll find out that you lied through your teeth. And, uh, oh, you're already elected, so it doesn't matter that you lied. Oh, well. Yeah. And, and like, the problem here is that, you know, we get a lot of Americans that just, they go down when they vote. They either vote Democrat, 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 or Republican, Republican, Republican. There's a lot of people that do that. Like, they don't even know anything about the candidates sometimes. And they just vote right down the list, Republican or Democrat, for every single person. So yeah, this is, this is kind of a problem. And then people get elected and some people don't even know anything about the candidates. Yeah. Also, I wanted to show you guys this here real quick. There's going to be a comet here that's going to appear tonight. I think it's going to go on for several days though, but you can see here a green comet to appear in the night sky for the first time in 50,000 years. It's going to be really good here. Take a look. Grab your binoculars and look up at a as a recently discovered comet will make an appearance in the night sky for the first time in 50,000 years. The comet named C2022E3 was discovered through a wide field survey camera back in March 2022 when the comet was already inside the orbit of Jupiter. According to NASA, the comet will make its closest approach to the sun on January 12th before passing closest to the Earth on February 2nd. So I, th I think we're going to be able to see it for multiple days, uh, but I'm not 100% sure based on the wording here. This particular comet has an orbit around the sun that passes through the outer reaches of the solar system which is why no one in our lifetime has witnessed the green glow. The best opportunity for Northern Hemisphere stargazers to witness the once-in-a-lifetime phenomenon will be just before midnight on January 12th, according to Earth Sky. According to NASA, the comet should be visible through binoculars in the morning sky, but said it could become visible to the naked eye under dark skies. For Northern Hemisphere sky watchers, the comet will be visible for most of January, while those in the Southern Hemisphere will be able to catch a glimpse in early February as well. Yeah. So although the comet will be around 26 million miles away, this shows you the world's a big place, Earth Sky said observers will be able to spot it near the North Star and should be visible early in the evening. And you'll notice that it will have a glowing green coma around it. So let me know if you see it up in the sky. So let me know your thoughts here. I'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for liking and sharing these videos. Here's some videos you can watch next. Here is a video about President Biden's second set of classified documents being found. Some interesting info there. And here is a new video about $1,232 checks being sent out from the IRS to millions of people. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.